Good evening. This is Kristen Mullins with Special Olympics Maryland. Welcome to the 2018 Special Olympics Maryland Summer Games Swimming Pre-Competition Webinar. With me tonight, I have our swim venue lead, Neil Coffey, here to answer any specific swimming competition rules, reminders, questions you might have, and also sitting on silent, on mute, available in case we have any emergencies or uh, questions we are unable to answer, is Mike Sarnowski, the uh, Vice President of Sports and programming. Once again, my name is Kristen Mullins, and thank you all for joining us this evening. On the right-hand side of your screen, if you have any questions, you can type in a question if you want to ask something as a webinar is proceeding, or it, you can raise your hand. That's where we can uh, answer your question live and in person. Please remember that this webinar will be is being recorded, and we will be posting it back to you tomorrow at the latest on YouTube with the slide deck provided. So know that all of this information will be given back to you in case you want to get it out to your families, athletes, unified partners, whoever, to make sure everybody has the most information for the Summer Games this year. So tonight, first few things we are going to talk about, map of Towson University, the schedule, the master summer game schedule in case you want to know about any of the other sports that are occurring and going on at the same time the differences or changes that we have in awards and staging a lot of summer or swimming summer game reminders and summer game miscellaneous and updates once again we have quite a few slides just are, that are general about the event itself so please bear with us especially if you have specific questions about swimming we will get to them, maybe hold your questions in, until maybe not necessarily the end, but the topic you were looking for, because we do have quite a few slides to cover for our summer games this year. First thing you see up on the screen, those of you who are watching us via web, is a campus map of Towson University. To make it easy, everybody look at the top word university. And right below that, you will see swimming, Burdick Hall. And there's a pretty little black arrow pointing to the building. Now, I know off the top of my head, being so new to Towson University, this is a little confusing to me. But those of you who have been to Towson University or remember when swimming used to be at Towson University, it is the same pool, same location. We also have free parking in two locations, the University Union Building and the Towson Town Towers parking parking buildings. So you guys will be able to utilize both of them and they are both for free. So please share with your families and athletes that there is plenty of parking at the Towson Burdick Pool area. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Towson Burdick Pool. Please share this following information with your athletes and families. Once again, free parking is available in the garage across at Towson Town, Burdick Hall. You can bring in stadium chairs, camp chairs in the gym area. You can bring in coolers and food in the gym area. We will have tarps down on all of the gyms. They are tarps that belong to the school and they reuse them. So please do not write on them. But anywhere that they are, there are tarps down is where athletes who are wet, maybe coming from the pool, can hang out. And that's where food and beverages can be. But try your best to have all the athletes drop as best as possible so we don't have pooling of water where slippage and fall could happen. The seating in the pool stadium is first come, first serve. Please do not save seats to be courteous to other spectators after your event or your athlete has swam politely switched out so other people can uh, be on the pool deck to see their athletes participate in the state games. There will be no standing along the railing and at the stairs in the stadium. It is a safety issue and we will have security in place to keep the area clear and accessible for the wheelchair lift. The security is for safety of the stairwell and access only and not to police the seats. So this is not people for your parents to ask and say, hey, they took our seats and we, we need them to move over and I can't see. No, the security is there to make sure we keep the railings open. We will also have merchandise sold on site. 
And at this time, we have vending machines that are available, but we're still working with the university about if they're going to open the concession stand that is new at the Burdick location. Now what you guys have all been waiting for, the blessed map, a map of Burdick Pool. This is looking down like an aerial view of the venue map. At the top of the screen, you will see the three gyms, gym one, gym two, and gym three. Gym one will be awards. It is not the entire gym, but of course a large portion will be roped off in chairs and a stage that you will see when you come in. Any of the other open areas is available for delegation seating. The entire gym two will be open for delegation seating. And in the back corner of gym two is where we will call for pre-staging. Staging and pre-staging will both be in gym number three. We will have the athletes walk from gym three through the office to the pool. There will be staging and seating all the way around the pool deck where then the athletes will enter the pool depending on their event, 25 meter or longer on either side. And then they will exit, as you can see down in the right-hand corner, post-competition exit. Neil, I wanted to make sure you were agreeing with me and then also taking a look if there's something specific you want to ask, um, add in to the coaches about this map. Uh, Chris and Neil texted me. He had a slight emergency at home. He had to step away from the phone and we'll be back momentarily. So, um, um, but uh, based on my recollection and uh, our conversations, I think this reflects it pretty well. Okay. Um, I do note that we have Lauren and uh, Sharon from the swimming management team on the line as well. So if either of you have any corrections, um, uh, that may be another source of information while Neil deals with his. Uh, uh, Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Oh, you're back. Great. Sorry, I, I had to step away for a moment. Well, just to catch you up to speed, we were looking at the Burdick Pool venue map. I was just explaining where the delegations were going to sit and then how athletes were going to be coming around the pool deck. That there is a coaches area on the pool deck, but that is for coaches to be available in case there is an issue or a question, but not necessarily access to athletes. Correct. And, and, and the other thing, Kristen, is that just to remind everyone that that coaches area is for the coaches with the special credential we give one to each area. This is not us saying, hey, all coaches can now be in the space because it really is a limited space. Right. And those of you who remember Towson, or even if you are a new coach, it's, a bench it is just think of a bench on a football field it's a, the size of a bench that's that's all we've got so we want to make sure we're respectful of the space and something neil and i were talking about earlier you know this is go time this is what the athletes have been working all season for making it the states though so hopefully the coaching is, you've done what you've done and release them to do their best coaches Okay, the swimming main schedule per the event guide that is being distributed, we have Saturday, June 9th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We will have a coaches meeting at the venue immediately following the competition on Saturday. And then again on Sunday, 8 to 3. Neil, would you like to give a few comments about the coaches competition or the coaches meeting where you usually host, have that now that we're changing venues? Um. No, I mean, usually the Saturday coaches meeting is just our opportunity to kind of regroup from the day, address any issues, to identify any issues that we haven't yet addressed from Saturday. Um, you know, I'm sure that this year, because we're returning to Burdick for the first time in a couple of years, we and it's also a, a new layout because of the, the construction additions to the building, you know, there may be some things that we want to tweak for Sunday. You know, that's, that's generally the focus of our Saturday conversation. So if we haven't already addressed it, you know, it's those things that we reasonably can address for Sunday. And then it's just an opportunity for us to identify those things that we want to make sure get on our list for the following year. So it's, it's a brief meeting. Okay. And please know, coaches, that all of the other swim, or not swim, excuse me, 
Sporting events have meetings on Friday, and there are coaches meetings that are scheduled for all sports. So Neil has been very accommodating, especially for those of you who are traveling far distances, to have a meeting on the day of the competition. So it would behoove you, if you could please, to stay after and know that Neil is going to be very respectful of your time and hold a short coaches meeting. But if we're wondering if you've already left or you don't have a representative or you know you disappear, that really makes it difficult, especially if we're trying to get out information to everybody to correct for Sunday's um, Sunday's rest of the, the competition on Sunday. So please, please, please do your best to know that there will be an expectation that you stay for a brief coaches meeting at the conclusion of Saturday's competition. Here are the events that we will run in, in specific order, starting on the left-hand side with Saturday, break, and then you'll see on Sunday, the second red brick of events. Neil, is there anything you'd like to comment or share about this event schedule? Not at this time. Okay. <laughs> Just to give all of you a little background information, the Summer Games Master Schedule, your head of delegation, Area directors will probably be at Towson on Thursday, June 7th, registering your athletes, picking up the shirts, and also attending a head of delegation meeting for any last minute information. Friday, this is the most updated tentative schedule as of right now. You can see there's a lot going on on Friday with cheerleading, lunches, block party, merchandise, coaches meeting for athletics, bocce, and softball, and our wonderful opening ceremonies. Saturday, and I tried to help you guys out a little bit with a focus star. You'll see kind of in the middle of the page, that's us, from 8 to 5, swimming at Burdick Hall. Also, opportunities if there's young athletes or family members that you want to see what's going on in their area. We have open house sessions, merchandise on sale, and then, of course, a HOD meeting in the evening just to catch up and touch base with everybody and what's occurring throughout the summer games. And some fun events, the softball home run derby, Olympic Park dance, and of course the family reception. And then Sunday, once again, the uh, conclusion of our competition from 8 to 3. Any comments, Neil, about the master schedule? Comments, questions? No, I think we're good. Okay. Once again, this is just some general information about the overall um, Summer Games event. We have our opening ceremony on Friday, the dinner block party, when we start parading in the staging for our athletes. So those delegations that are staying overnight or have close enough um, lodgings will be start starting at 630. We will need to know from delegations by June 1st, number of delegation members participating in the opening ceremony. Transportation. <laughs> Transportation, I think, is going to be a lot easier for us with swimming because we have close parking garages and two locations for us. But if you have athletes who are on campus, we want to pay, pay attention to where they are located and knowing where they can catch a bus to access other, other venues on campus. There is a loop running from 8 to 10 a.m., servicing the parking lots on Friday. And then a loop will service the housing facilities for opening ceremonies and the block party. Please, coaches, I would highly recommend talking with your head of delegation, your area directors, on how you want to best transport your athletes from, especially if you are staying on campus, to the different fun activities and competition. This is just talking specifically about the shuttle on Saturday, specifically take, paying attention to where your athletes are located. But once again, if you are driving in for just the day of, and especially your family members, remember there is free parking in the parking garages. And stating once again that Sunday, there will be shuttle service through the conclusion of the softball event and for bocce and athletics. 
Just to let you know, in case the competition is delayed, the shuttle will extend to the end of the competition and all shuttles should have wheelchair lifts and they will be running Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Once again, this would probably be a great slide to share with your family members if that is an option for them. It has a phone number just so they can verify when the pickup, especially if they had um, special needs uh, with the wheelchair, there's a number here they can call. There I are can just add one, Kristen, just, yes, just as a reminder to everyone, um, because our competition does start at 8 on Saturday and Sunday, um, please block that, in, you know, please plan accordingly to make sure that the athletes in those events do arrive and are ready for staging to start at 745. Um, I know that's a little bit earlier than some of the other venues, so please plan accordingly. Excellent point. Just because on that other slide it says 8 a.m. start, that is a hard 8 a.m. start. We want swimmers in the water, not you're arriving and setting up your chair at 8 a.m. Excellent point, Neil. Thank you. Um, there are still additional activities planned for the block party in Olympic Park. Of course, sports clinics, a movie night, art activities, a dance demo, and our Saturday night dance theme is Tropical Island. So, Jack, you better bring your hula hoop or hula skirt and uh, be in your best tropical out, out, outfit. And, of course, there's also young athletes program activities in the Towson Center. Okay, back to swimming. Pre-staging and staging. We will have the pre-staging in the back portion of gym three. We'll have Kevin staged in the doorway, so he will be able to call for athletes. If athletes are not at staging when need to be, they will be disqualified from their events. So please make sure that you're utilizing the Remind app, watching the, the screen, getting athletes to where they need to be. Awards will be in the front section of gym number one. All athletes will be escorted from the pool deck immediately to awards. If they have an event within the 10 to 15 heats or divisions, they will be kept on the pool deck and escorted or re-escorted to staging so they will not miss their next swim. This is something that I talked about with the games management and we'll do our best to make sure we catch all the athletes so they don't miss sitting in their, uh, miss their their swim because their race because they're sitting in awards, but we're gonna do the best we can and it's gonna take you guys helping us out with labeling the athletes. So Neil, I'm gonna turn it to you in case there's something I missed on this slide. No, I, I think we're good. I mean, uh, what, we got really, really positive, we got very positive feedback last year on the Remind app. I know that it helped tremendously to make sure that we we're getting the message out um, and allow people to not be tethered to that, you know, right around the staging area. Um, so please remind your groups that if they haven't already done so, to sign up for the Remind app and to be monitoring that. It takes a lot of stress off of Kevin um, in, in trying to identify and collect people. Okay. Um, before we go uh, forward, uh, uh, Margie Young typed in a question. Yep. Um, this is actually going back to when you touched on staging earlier, but if we could clarify, uh, she says in the past, uh, the stage two of staging was accessible to parents and coaches uh, and staging area three was cut off to all except volunteers. Uh, is this going to be the same? I'm going to wheel this to Neil because I was un under the impression of every time I've ever talked, there's only been two stages. So I don't know what she's talking about, stage two and three. Pre-staging, we ha have assistance, but staging, it's only volunteers. Is that correct, Neil? That's correct. Okay. And when we say volunteers, we're talking about the uh, the volunteers that are running the uh, the swimming venue, not uh, delegation volunteers and such there. That's correct. And we do have something that we will clarify that even further in another slide. But yes, that means when she says except for volunteers, that is day of event volunteers not you know what we would consider everybody who are <laughs> pretty much helping out with special olympics right. volunteers. okay and then uh scott also just as a clarification uh i think on one of the earlier slides we might have missed an edit uh and uh just wanted to clarify that all of the competition this year 
is being done at Burdick Hall. Uh, yes. I think there was one that still had a reference to Loyola. So it did. You know, for everybody's everybody's edification, everything for swimming is being done at Burdick Hall. Yes. Um, so great. And then, that's all the yeah. questions that we had typed in. Jack, I'll answer yours uh, by uh, typing in uh, your uh, the response into the question window. Okay, thank you, Mike. Pool deck and staging access. Margie, you just jumped the gun on us. We are right there. Coaches will be allowed to assist with staging and moving to the pool deck. Um, for skills, only coaches with credentials will be allowed to assist. Those, this is for skilled events. Those, the, those are which we consider the assisted. All other events, coaches will not be allowed in the staging area or moving athlete, athletes to the pool deck. So Margie, when we're talking about the staging area, we're really talking about what has always been done not pre-staging. So of course, pre-staging, we can get athletes over there, but in the staging area, coaches will not be allowed. There will be a designated area on the pool deck, but only coaches with a credential, the one pass will be allowed in that crowded space. Remember, each delegation will receive that one pass and it can be given to coaches, or I know in certain circumstances, there might be a parent who might need to be on the deck, but it was that one pass and it is up to you how you see fit and how you want to rotate it through. Um, to your delegation members. Neil, is there something you'd like to add to this slide? No, I mean, we just we just ask that everyone be mindful of the fact that we have really limited pool deck space. We're trying to we're trying to move through our event as quickly as we can. Um, and the other challenge is, um, you know, the access to actually get on the pool deck is through that one classroom. So, um, you know, just just be aware that we're trying to get athletes through that space, and we're we're asking you know the coaches not only to be mindful of you know the one coach per area on the deck, but we don't want it to be that revolving door where there's so much movement that's interfering with what we're trying to get done. Right, and I feel with 21 coaches and, hopefully actively and, listening and on this call, and I was there with Neil at Howard, I was at Anne Arundel, Charles the Baltimore, I mean, I was at so many swimming events this year that I saw that there was a lot of open access to the pool deck. And I know some of you coaches might think, well, we always have had open pool access. Towson is a very small pool deck to be working with such a large number of athletes, trying to get them through the chairs and our games management that, you know, we really would ask that you would respect what we're trying to do is getting all the athletes to their races on it in a timely manner to respect their training that it is different than your area's events. You know, it's a state competition. And so we, we wanna make sure that they are prepared for state competition. Go ahead, Neil. Um, and the other part is, and, is you know, we, we were talking here about the coaches areas and, and you know, we're, 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 we're making the assumption that we wanna make sure that everyone also understands that we're, we're only talking about coaches on the pool deck. We're not inviting family members or other spectators on the pool deck. Abs you know, that is not, and, you know, we're not going to hear on Saturday or Sunday, oh, I need to escort my friend, child, et cetera. Um, you know, we need to make sure that those expectations are very clear. And, and we want to remind everyone to communicate that out, that people aren't showing up expecting, hey, I'm just going to go sit on the pool deck and be there. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is uh, the handout for the Remind app. Once again, I will make sure that the slide deck is available. I will also add in this as a separate attachment so you can hand it out like a one page so you can forward it to your family members so they can also have access to the Remind app. It's a very, very quick and easy way for us to get you know staging information out to you and your families and even the athletes. They themselves can sign up for the Remind app and also as we project it onto the wall for staging. Like Neil said, it was a it, it seemed to have helped quite a bit last year, and we'd like to continue this process to maybe cut down on the loudspeaker, or the, the, the noise that it can occur in the gym. Okay, this is where we get to a uh, something that you could really, really help us out with. Um, this next week, I will be sending all of the training information to Neil, and we really need your help, coaches, that if you have special accommodations, specifically an athlete needing lift or special stairs, 
um, an inside or an outside lane, depending on light start or access to stairs. We really need you to get those names to us and those accommodations by next Wednesday, May 30th. It is very, very important that we understand and know that there are some accommodations that we, that Neil needs to place as he's starting to set the heats and the divisions. And the sooner we know that, the, the better we can prepare for uh, setting the heats. There have been some questions about the one-on-one -on -one accommodations. Just know that those accommodations need to be submitted with the athlete's name and a reason why. Because once we determine if we need, are going to accommodate that accommodation, we will need to create a credential for that person. If no comments are entered, we, we can't accommodate a special request because once again, we, we do a lot of paperwork and prep getting ready to help your athletes have a wonderful event. But if last minute questions and issues, if something that hasn't happened all season long, all of a sudden you expect it states, it, it's not fair. So, so please, if you have a special accommodation, you need to be emailing us and letting us know and making sure your area leadership is aware and putting it into GMS appropriately. Mike or Neil, do you have a comment to add to this top section on this slide about communicating with us accommodations? Other than other than just to reiterate what Kristen just mentioned, um, you know, be as specific as you can in what accommodation you're seeking. Um, you know, we we will do what we can within reason and permiss you know and permissibility to address the request. Um, but you know, too often we get just a very brief. Um, you know, one thing we'll see is that the swimmer is deaf and. You know, we're not certain what accommodation is being requested there. Um, you know, so so make sure that it's it's clear to us, not just reporting what the situation the athlete need is, you know, situation is, but what you're seeking for us to do in the venue operations at Summer Games. Uh, yeah. Also, just based on experience with uh, some of the requests that we've gotten. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we may uh, be following up to get some additional information. We've had one occasion where folks have requested um, someone from their delegation to be on the deck with half of their athletes. Well, maybe not half, but a third of their athletes. That's probably unreasonable, depending upon the size of some delegations. And so we may be asking questions of um, what, uh, why that is needed for each athlete. Um, and uh, parents being uncomfortable, uh, or uh, whatever is not a legitimate reason for that. Um, so part of part of being uh, able to come to summer games in Special Olympics is a certain level of independence. Uh, and um, so uh, the, the uh, again, just know that not every accommodation will automatically be rubber stamped with a yes. Uh, there may be some questions depending upon the volume uh, and the nature of it. Yes, and thank thank you, Mike and Neil. Once again, having been to a handful of qualifiers this year. Coaches, you did a tremendous job running your events, getting your athletes ready. And once again, I did not see an overabundance of coaches, one-on-one, -on -one, unified partners, parents on the deck with the athletes. So once again, it's, it's kind of interesting to then why all of a sudden at States, it's this big issue. So please be aware, I was at actively at qualifiers and we will want to follow up on the requests. In the middle of this page, we do have something to think about, asking you to think about coaches. Your athletes, they need to be able to enter the water upon their own fruition when the, the starter instructs them to within 30 seconds. Now, of course, if they are making an attempt, it's understood, or we, will, we understand if they need time getting in the pool via the stairs, but they need to be able to actively be moving towards starting their blocks so we can be respectful of all of athletes who are ready to start their their race. Please know that if they are unable to do so, we will ask them to be moved from the deck and they will be uh, disqualified. There will be a quiet area available. It is a classroom that is separate from the rest of the gym facilities. 
it uh, at all athletes must be completely dry to utilize this area because it is carpet it is a classroom for the school and it is a very small small classroom and please be advised it will be air conditioned so if it's a an athlete who's just been in the pool it's gonna be quite chilly in there we cannot we don't have access to control that but if there's a, a place that you have an athlete that it's uh, too sensitive to the noise uh, be, be aware there will be a small area for a, a quiet area Mike, is there anybody with questions or comments that we need to address before we move on? Uh, actually, I'm, I think I'm getting most of them here. Uh, the question uh, I was just trying to answer for uh, Margie, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, for Margaret Hen rather, uh, was related to uh, do, with an assisted swim, whether they need to ask for the accommodation with that. And uh, the response would be no, that's by definition, the assisted swim has someone in the water with uh, the athlete. However, um, it would be helpful for uh, to provide the name of the person who will be uh, with the athlete uh, in the water. Um, uh, and actually, if we can, um, with this on, uh, just for a moment on assisted swim, Sean uh, from Charles County was asking uh, about the assisted swim. Do we have a slide later that we get into that specifically? Uh, it, there's a statement on it. So yes, if we want to hold our assistance for that. questions for that one. Yeah, we will hold that. Okay. Okay. One of the things we were asking all of you coaches to do, we, we will provide Sharpie markers, or if you want to go ahead with a uh, three weeks to spare, if you want to dig through some of your supplies and pull out your uh, Sharpie markers, we're going to ask that you mark all athletes on both arms with their name their heat division, that's what it is, their division, that's what we identify it is, which is a rule, and county. So then if we have a, come across an athlete who maybe is nonverbal or very shy, given the situation, we're asking them to shuffle quite a bit, that we can easily look at their arm and uh, notify, identify their name. As you're looking at this, this was an example I found online. I was unable to get an athlete or find someone to assist me with taking my own picture. The first column says E for event. You do not have to write the number. You can actually write the abbreviation freestyle, backstroke, I am. The heat or the second column is the division number. And then the third will be the lane. And as you can see, there's an indication if they are in a relay, what position they are going to be in that relay and what lane they're going to be in. I feel that this was a pretty clear example of what we're looking for. To me, it's rather extensive. We should not have any athletes in more <laughs> that many events, but uh, this is the best way we can help our volunteers. Remember, we have day of volunteers and they're trying to run an event and help all of our athletes have a great time. But sometimes we, you know, we're trying to line some people up if they have it written on their arms. It really does help. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? Neil, we'll go to you first, if anything you want to add. Okay, Mike, are there any questions about uh, writing on athletes? Um, uh, Alan was uh, just asking if unified partners need to do this on their arms as well, and the answer uh, I would assume would be yes. I would be yes. We would like all, I guess using the word athletes, I'm trying to say I should have put the word participants because to me, you know, unified partners, they are athletes in this case competing at the event. But yes, all all participants need to have information on their arms to help us quickly move them through staging and on to the event and to clear, help everybody clarify where they're supposed to be. If you would please use a black Sharpie if that color because of the person's skin tone or color doesn't work. We understand, but the reason why we're asking you to use a black Sharpie is in case we need to make changes, we as the event staff will have a different color. So please adhere to our request to use a black Sharpie permanent marker. Of course, I'm using the brand Sharpie. No, it does not have to be a Sharpie marker, but anything that is permanent it is Crayola and washable, it'll come off in the water. So please make it a permanent marker of your choice. And if, and if I can emphasize from the staging perspective, this information is vital for making sure we have the right people 
place in the right place at the right time. So we appreciate everyone doing this. And just like Neil said earlier about the, the, the fact that we are starting at 8 a.m., you know, if you guys are rolling in at 7.30, which I know is early, and we've asked you to put this information on their arms, think about how long that might take you getting, depending on the size of your delegation, getting this information on all of the athletes. So it might be something you might need to take into consideration, utilizing your volunteers, your assistant coaches, your unified partners of getting everybody marked correctly for their events. Okay, uh, Kristen, Margie Young has a question that probably is easier to have her ask if I can go ahead and unmute her line. Sure. Margie, you should be able to speak. Margie, if you can go ahead and ask your question. I'm not sure what you were asking with when you said Saturday on Saturday and Sunday on Sunday. Oh, I understand what she means. Uh, yeah. Only Saturday events on the arm and then Sunday only Sunday events, so not all of their events. Okay. I, I mean, I still never heard her. It says we've unmuted her, so I don't know yeah. if her computer is muted itself, but she. Okay, uh, Margie, if, that, if you were asking something different, just type it into the question box and we'll see if we can answer you. Thanks. Did we answer Margaret's question too? I, it looks like we have some other questions going on. Uh, one thing that's not on there, Sean was asking about bib numbers. Should that not also be uh, up by the name? Excellent point. Yes, bib numbers would help tremendously. Thank you very much for that comment. I will make sure I add that to the email, especially if people are just listening or just look at the slides that we, I'll make that change before I send out the slide deck. Uh, reminder that remember you are responsible for bringing the appropriate equipment for these athletes, swimsuits, goggles, swim caps, and water shoes or flip flops if, if wanted and if they use them. These are not things that we provide for athletes to compete. Um, stagers meeting. Stagers from each county must meet with Kevin K so he knows who to reach out when looking for athletes and pre-staging. Uh, I'm sure many of you recognize the name Kevin. If you are a new coach, you'll be more than happy to meet him. He's, he's very friendly and helpful to get you to get your athletes to staging, but it really helps if you have someone on your management team kind of over there in the staging area helping Kevin get everybody into their proper divisions. Uh, this is just a second reminder, just in case we didn't make it clarified the first time, special needs of athletes, if there's any accommodations, please, please let us know ahead of time. And Neil, you gave a perfect example. You know, if you just put deaf, we don't know what that means. So if you can help us by identifying what accommodations you're asking for, it would be really helpful for us as we are putting the heats together. And of course, divisions will be posted prior to summer games and you will have that information prior to to share with your family members. Neil, do you have any comments or questions about this slide? No, just un under appropriate equipment, just to make sure that we, we everyone has their flotation device yes. that they need for the flotation or assisted swims. Um, that is not something that we will provide or that Towson can be expected to provide, so make sure that you have that upon arrival, um, because we're, we don't we don't have the opportunity or resources to to locate those items for athletes um, prior to the event. Great point, Neil. And and I I experienced that at some of the qualifiers. Just to let you know, this should have been all season long at any of the qualifiers you would, you went to. You were expected to bring your own equipment. There were two times that I was in a venue that, you know, people had to hustle around to try and flotation devices for certain um, delegations. And that is not something that they should have been responsible for and will not in the future. Please, please, please make sure if you need flotation devices, that is part of your checklist as people travel to Towson, or unfortunately they will not be per per permitted to participate in those, those events. So have your own flotation devices. Thank you, Neil, for that reminder. That was an excellent point. 
Um, Mike, how are we doing on questions or comments we need to maybe address to the group? Uh, let's see. There's yeah, uh, there is a little concern in terms of the uh, the sharpies don't uh, wash off uh, between Saturday and Sunday terribly easily. So I guess just do the best that you can. Uh, if, if, Mike, if I can interject there, it's not really a big deal that you only have Saturday and on Saturday and Sunday on Sunday, so long as the information is there we'll know what the events are and we'll be able to go from there. I mean, that's, it's, it's more important that the information is present. Okay. Um, and then um, Coach Gucci is asking, when will the divisions uh, be available? The sooner the better to avoid a snafu. And I hear crickets. So... <laughs> Well, let's put it this way. You're you're talking to a, a staff member who's going to do her best to get everything to a volunteer, to a bunch of volunteers who are who are going to get this all put together for for us in, in a timely manner. I know when I need to be at Towson, so the goal is, of course, as as soon as possible, of course, to hit, hit catch any snafus or hiccups. Uh, but Leah will just be in communication as best we can. But at this time, I, I feel it's too pre premature to set down a date and say we'll have something to you at this time yeah uh, what I can tell you based date. on yeah what I can tell you based on history is do not expect it any earlier than Thursday night before summer games uh, that's not saying it'll be ready then I'm saying don't expect it any sooner than that there are several different uh, uh, steps that it has to go through uh, and um, uh, having lived with various portions there um, you know uh, Thursday is uh, probably the earliest that it'll be available um, well, of course, if we can beat that, that would be great. We certainly aren't going to sit around, uh, but um, uh, that's probably uh, your best expectation is not before Thursday night. Um, some information about uh, alternates with the relays. Remember, you can register alternate members to compete as someone on the relay team. They should have a slower time for their leg of the event because we don't want them to DQ based off of the qualifying time. All alternates for medical reasons will be accepted into the event staging. Please provide as much advance notice as possible. Of course, we understand a scratch because you'll tell us that when it happens, but go ahead and have your alternate available. Only registered alternates can replace a team member. So coaches, please, please, please right now don't come running up to us and saying, oh, I didn't think that we would have to have an alternate. I didn't register someone. Only registered alternates will be placed on a relay team. Something that came up at a qualifier, we talked about this in your unified relays. For the different legs of the relay, they should alternate athlete partner. Of course, if you haven't been training that way this year, it's understandable. You don't want to switch up the group. But it kind of makes sense if you want to place an athlete with a partner on opposite sides of the pool deck, there's additional support for us as support for organization, you know, an athlete with a partner, so we can make sure the relays run smoothly. But if that's not how you set them up, and you know it's understandable that it would be too difficult at this late stage in the game to change it. And here's an example of your relay card, which you will fill in and enter and turn in on the day of competition. I will also make sure I provide a copy of this to you so coaches, you can go ahead and have them pre-filled out or at least thinking about how you're going to submit your relay entries. Of course, writing down the event, once you know the division and the lane, your county, if you activate an alternate, yes or no, and then where they are going to be located, swimmer one, two, three, or four. Swimmers one, two, three, or four also should have the bib number and the athlete's name and then your head coach signature. Once again, I will make sure that this Word document is provided for you when I send out all this webinar slide information, but they will also be provided for you day of competition. Neil, do you have anything you want to say about relays? No, just, just to reiterate what you said, make sure that all that information is present because that card is then what the stagers use to line everyone up on the team is what they use on the pool deck to get everyone ready. Um, and, you know, the reason why we're looking for division and lane is, um, 
you know, if someone just puts this is the um, upper team. shore team yeah, exactly. and there's two upper shore teams in that particular relay, we don't always know which. So all of that information is critical to make sure we can get the teams organized and in the right place so we can keep moving through the schedule. Mike, have we received any questions about relays that we need to address to the group? Uh, one just came in from Scott. Uh, for the relays, what happens if the athletes have issues getting out of the water? Can they stay in the lane uh, off to the side until the relay team has finished their race? I believe Absolutely. the answer to that is yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and meaning to not impede any of the other lanes of the right. team's racing, correct? Yeah, or, or affect any athlete who's doing a turn or anything like that. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason. That's that's totally understandable. Thank you. Great, great question, Scott. Uh, some resources that you will have when you uh, show up as we do delegation check-in. Of course, you will have all of your athletes from your delegation at, and their times. So you'll have a list of all the ones that are going to be going at 8 a.m., at 8.15, at 8.30. Then you also have a list identifying each athlete, their specific events. I think um, Coach Gucci, this was you're talking about, about you know making sure we catch all the glitches. So when we send this information to you coaches, it's gonna be a good idea to make sure you have your list of events per athlete that we filled it in correctly. And of course, down at the bottom, the label with the athlete's name, their bib number and events. Uh, one note with that, Kristen. Um, uh, first of all, uh, no, we are not adding the shot put to swimming events. Uh, <laughs> These are the just long examples. Term. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is from track uh, yeah. before we get to questions. Uh, secondly, um, the times, the staging times that are listed there are our best estimate before the competition starts. So that uh, always go by what you're hearing over the, uh, um, over the Remind app and such. Uh, but this at least can give you a rough idea as to when um, uh, we generally expect things to happen, um, and uh, and also we're, it's uh, um, it's just, again it's a best guess at that point in time, um, and hopefully you find it helpful. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for clarifying. Yes, these are clearly track examples of events, but yes, it would be the same for swimming. Okay, back to some general information about summer games. Um, All registered before, Kristen, Kristen, I'm sorry, before you go back to general information, then I'm sorry, Sean just added another question. He says, in the past, deck volunteers have not allowed my swimmers to enter the water as soon as the previous swimmer leaves. Uh, will the volunteers be instructed that this is allowed? I have swimmers that take time to get to enter the water. Uh, and I'm assuming, assuming, Sean, you're talking about for relays with that. So, um, well, the, what what needs to happen is, of course, the starter, the, the starting official, my, uh, Neil, correct me if I'm wrong. The starting official is the one who calls athletes to the deck, to to stage, or not to stage. I'm sorry, to the blocks, and that that's the person who should be directing people to start. So it shouldn't be Dea volunteers standing on the pool deck giving them direction as such. And so I apologize. I mean, I wasn't there last year, and I haven't seen that. But it shouldn't be day of volunteers giving athletes the okay to get in the water. It should be the staging official. I, mean, I, I think what you, the, I, what we need to make sure that we communicate is are the timers at the lanes understand their role and what to communicate and what not to. So we'll make sure that um, I'll make note of it and we'll do our best to communicate that out. Okay, and, um, okay. that's probably where the message is coming from. Yeah, Sean actually is asking specifically about with the relay. So swim, let's say it's a 50 meter or four by 50, whatever. Uh, right, right. So that makes off. sense. Yeah, he, he just wants to be sure that the, the folks there on the deck are going to let his second swimmer get into the water right after the first swimmer takes off because it takes that athlete uh, an extended period of time uh, to get into the water. Okay. The, with the relays, then that does make sense. But I, I just was what I, I thought he meant yep. people trying to clear the pool from, say, just a 50 free and they're still trying to get out of the pool. That that's really the starter who's the one yep. who can identify. Okay. So relays, yep. yes, that's understood. Yep. So, yes, Sean, we'll make sure that that happens. 
Okay, so kind of heading back to the general information, registered members will be provided lunch on Saturday and Sunday. All delegation members will be provided dinner and breakfast during their designated time periods. Uh, that Again, the dinner and breakfast is just so staying overnight. Yes. Uh, but other individuals may purchase a meal, breakfast, 8 a.m., $8, 8 a.m., oh, $8, lunch is $8, and dinner, 11 And this is interesting because this slide did not come from me. I know it says, note, concessions are expected to be available at Loyal Blakefield, so uh, <laughs> I'm just going to... Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get on Mr. Uh, Steve Bennett's case about properly editing his slides. Yes, so. but but let, let you guys know, this is referring back to, I think, my third slide. We are still working with Towson University about making sure concession stand is a, a, available in the Burdick Hall swim area. There is one there, but we're still working with a chef to see if he wants to have it open for the event because they, they have smoothies. It's like a health, it's a health bar. So it's going to be not your typical lunch concession stand but it's it's going to have some opportunities so hopefully i'll have that uh updated for you guys prior to summer games um coach at control center we will have a location in the unitas minigan room and then all delegations should receive housing from jane dunn hopefully you've heard from your delegation hod's verifying your housing okay Summer games, there will be a family briefing on Sunday at 4 p.m. in the University Union. So for athletes participating in athletics, bocce, softball, and swimming, it is the responsibility of the delegation of these athletes other than co competitions for relays and doubles. Um, at this time, you, the delegation, will be in charge of communicating with Team Maryland coach for handing off the athletes during the events. So our coaches for swimming are Mallory and Scott. So coaches, I'm sure you have been in communication with them. If you have um, swimmers going to Seattle, please communicate with them for the relays. They will not be wearing their Team Maryland swimsuit for the relays at uh, state games. So do not feel that they have to change into anything that's identifiable, but we will make sure that they are, everybody knows that it's Team Maryland on the deck. That's why they're, they're suits don't match. So it's an accommodation that we're giving to the relay team. Does anybody have questions about the athletes participating in national games? Mike, did we have a question at all for anybody with national games? Uh, not related to that. No. Nope. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But one just to come in. Yep. Uh, who's responsible to enter USA Games athletes? Oh, Sean, uh, We'll take care of that at our headquarters. We'll be entering. No, 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 uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Who is responsible for entering them into their relay events? Okay. Yes, we will take care of that. You are responsible for entering them into yeah. any event that is not part of their uh, one of the relays uh, for their USA game. So all their individual events. And if they're doing a relay that is separate from one being offered at USA. No, games, no, no, no. Know that's really the case, though. So. Mike, athletes can only participate in one relay, so that one relay, if they are going to Seattle, will be the one that they are in for national games. So it, all the events that the delegations are responsible for are individual. I will be handling their relay entries. Okay. And the events that they are, in, um, delegations, the events that you are entering these athletes into must be the events that they are swimming out at nationals. Um, I, I, from what I understand, you guys have been doing an awesome job all season, making sure that they have been competing in those at the qualifiers, but it needs to be the same for states. Yes. Yeah. Talk to Mallory and Scott if you have any questions or issues or concerns, but hopefully this will go very smoothly for all of us, supporting our athletes heading out and coaches heading out to Seattle. Uh, event guide will be distributed electronically to all HODs, coaches, um, medical, we will have medical on staff at the venue on the pool deck. So just know that we will have uh, transportation and medical assistance there. We will be inside, but please note that just because we're inside, it, that pool deck can get very, very hot with all the people in there. So make sure everybody's staying hydrated. 
and inclement weather, even though we are inside, if it happens to be a thunderstorm, we were required in it at the um, Towson's request, we will uh, have to stop and delay the event based off of their thunder protocol and their, their allowance of us back on the pool deck and into the water. So just know that we have proper coverage, but we will be asked to leave the pool deck for safety purposes until they deem it uh, okay for us to enter and begin our, resume our competition. Mike, do we have any questions again at all? Uh, not on that topic. Uh, if the next slide is the question slide, there are, uh, there is at least one or two that we have to go back to. Yes, we do have questions regarding, uh, just if you have questions in general, there's uh, your list of regional sports directors or myself, you need to speak with me uh, regarding swim, but we have the night tonight. So yes, what are some questions we okay. can address? So one that Sean asked earlier that I thought we had a slide on, but apparently we didn't, is about the 15 meter unassisted event. Uh, at the qualifiers, this event was contested from the middle of the pool to the wall. Uh, how will it be done at States? Is it that way or is it across lanes or whatever? Um, he just, uh, and he may have a follow-up. So actually, I'm gonna go ahead uh, and let me find Sean on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and have Neil answer this question. Yep, that, that, that will be on your own. Sean. Yes. Um, I know the, when we can. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sean. Okay, and our, the qualifiers, my athletes competed uh, the 50 meter swim, started in the middle of the pool, and swam to the wall with the blocks for the finish. And I wanted to know how it was being contested at States. Would they be starting on the wall and swimming to the middle of the pool, or starting in the middle of the pool and swimming to a wall? All of the fundamental events um, will, will be starting at the wall, swimming to the middle of the pool. Okay. And we'll be starting at the shallow end of the pool. Um, so that way, you know, the, the, point, the goal being any of the 25s and the, and the tw fundamental events will end at the blocks where we have the touch pads. Um, well, because so that, okay, because as we have 15, if it's ending at the touch pads, we'd have to start in the middle of the pool. Correct. We're not, we it's don't end at the touch pads for the 15s. That's okay. So I have to make sure we I'm, will start. We will start all of those at that same end zone. Okay. I just have to make sure so I can explain that to my athletes. All right. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. And then uh, on a similar or related uh, topic, uh, Neil, we wanted to touch base with folks or make sure folks understand about the flotation races um, uh, in terms of the flotation devices that are usable. Uh, the rules specifically say that the device must be of the body wrap around type, such that if the athlete were not able to hold on to the device, the device would still support the athlete. Specifically says that devices such as kickboards, inner tubes, uh, or floats that wrap around the arms like water wings are not acceptable. That would also include noodles uh, and such. Only those devices that are the body wrap around type are acceptable for flotation races. Um, and again, uh, they, uh, the athletes need to provide, or your area needs to provide the, their own equipment for the flotation devices. So um, I think that is uh, it. I don't see any other questions uh, unless someone's typing furiously right now. Um, and I think that was the only other item that we wanted to point out uh, regarding uh, flotation or the fundamental events. Neil, is there any final comment, anything else that you would like to say before we end the webinar? I think we've covered a lot tonight, and um, we look forward to seeing everyone in a couple weeks. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody for everything you've done. I know that Summer Games is, is the culminating event, and you all have been working your tails off uh, all season, um, some of you since January or earlier, uh, to get your athletes ready. Uh, uh, as a fellow coach in, di in a different sport, but a fellow coach, uh, I know how, um, how challenging, time-consuming, and draining that can be, but also how energizing and exciting it can be as well. Uh, and uh, uh, we truly appreciate all that you do 
to uh, to make it possible for your athletes. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. We'll see you in a few weeks. Please email me. This is Kristen again. If you have any further questions, but definitely look for an email from me within 24, 48 hours with all of this atta attached and access to the slides, the webinar, and other attachments I promised I'd send to you guys. Thank you so much for your time this evening and have a great rest of your night and happy summer. Memorial Day weekend, the kickoff to summer. I'm going to go eat some watermelon. Bye, everybody. Good night, everyone.